going to everybody today. We got the Raw recap for April 21st, 2014. And today we got Dan O'Brien coming back from his wedding, his honeymoon, and just a couple hours before the show started. I guess his dad died. And they didn't say anything about it, but uh, when he came out, he was a little teary eyed, and you could kind of tell that he was emotional. Uh, he kept on, he was looking at the sky a little bit when he was doing the yes chant. And he came out, and Brie Bell was in the middle of the ring. And then as soon as Daniel Bryan came in, Stephanie McMahon's music hit, and then she, like, insincerely congratulated him and gave him a present, or a wedding present, I guess, that Dana O'Brien's going to face Kane at Extreme Rules next week uh, on Sunday for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So, another Kane versus Dana O'Brien match. Woo! And then Kane came out, even though Stephanie didn't approve or didn't want him to do that or whatever. She made it seem like it, but you kind of could tell that th that was probably the plan all along. And Kane gets his inner, inner demon on, and he tombstones Dana Bryan three times, one on the outside, second on the steel steps, the third on the announce table. I don't know if the announce table is supposed to break or not, but it'd probably be a little dangerous with everyone, you know, falling down while the, you know, giving a tombstone to Dana Bryan in a compromised position like that. So they went to commercial break, and Daniel Bryan, well, Daniel Bryan, was, after he got tombs on the steel steps, he was put on the stretcher, but then Kane came back and took him off the stretcher and, you know, attacked him more and then hit the tombs on the and I was able, so they went to commercial break. Dana Brown was on the stretcher. He didn't move at all. And they gave an update that he got a stinger. And I don't know if they said he can move his extremities or not, but he probably is not going to be on SmackDown tomorrow. And he's probably, he, he'll probably show up on Monday. So Dana Bryan is off a week, comes back, his father dies, and he gets demolished. Didn't even, didn't say one word. Just came out, yes chant, Stephanie comes out, Kane attacks him. So, there you go. Great start for Daniel Bryan's title reign coming out of WrestleMania. So then, we got the first semi-final match of the Intercontinental Number 1 Contender Championship between uh, Sheamus and Bad News Barrett. And this was uh, a good match, probably best match of the night. Uh, you know, even, well, it's definitely better than the other match, but the other uh, semi-final match probably is second best. And Bad News Barrett took this one, beat Sheamus, good back and forth match. I didn't really, you know, I knew that Bad News Barrett was probably going to win, but you never know. They might get hot on Sheamus, and Sheamus could uh, face against Big E. Maybe he turns heel or something like that. And so uh, Bad News Barrett, like, got out the ring, and Sheamus, like, leaned over the rope, something like that. And then Bad News uh, hit him with the bull hammer, knocked him out. One, two, three. So Bad News Barrett kind of looks like the... Uh, the num not the number one contender, but the, the favorite in this tournament so far, because he looked pretty damn good. So then Bray Wyatt came out and talked about the steel cage match against John Cena, and it was a pretty good promo. He talked about uh, John Cena. He sang the whole world in his hands. Almost the entire crowd was along with him, and they had an app vote at the beginning of the show, and it was either they John Cena was going to face either Luke Harper. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, or all three members of the Wyatt family. So we find out what happens at the end. So, you know, Bray does his, his shtick and does, you know, his Colt Lear promo that he doesn't really say anything, but you just need to listen to it because it's awesome. And then a Los Matadors versus a 3MB match. And I probably wouldn't even watch this match. I would have skipped right through it, but... They started off with El Torito and Hornswoggle, and I think they should have more major wrestlers, because when I saw that, I was like, it's pretty cool, because El Torito can move and Hornswoggle's Hornswoggle, but when El, El Torito's flying all over the place, and it looks pretty cool. So this probably, uh, El Torito and Hornswoggle probably face up at Extreme Rules. Um, El Torito won this one for El Matador as he pinned Drew McIntyre, got that W. I think he, oh yeah, they did the little three-man thing where Torito sits on him or something like that. So... Then that was done, and then Evolution came out, and Triple H might have he he was either sick or he was at a concert or something, but his his voice was done because I kind of walked away, and his voice was all raspy. I thought it was Batista or something, but then Batista started talking, and I was like, no, that's Batista. And then I look over and Triple H started talking again, and his his voice was done. So they cut to a, a video package of you know not the history of Evolution, and they. Sort of showed Ric Flair, but they didn't mention him. They just talked. They just said Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton. 
So if you didn't know anything about Evolution, you probably would think Ric Flair wasn't that big of a part of Evolution. He wasn't really, but, you know, he was, he's Ric Flair. He's, he's the man. And then, uh, so then they talked, uh, you know, about the Shield because they're going to have a match at Extreme Rules. Uh, Six-man tag, Shield against Evolution. And then the Shield came down and he thought stuff was going to go on. But uh, Evolution had their suits on, stuff like that. So, you know, they probably weren't going to get roughed up. So Evolution jumped out the ring, got on the stage, and then the Shield started talking crap to him. And Roman Reigns gave him an ultimatum. Either they can come fight like men, or they can run away like a bunch of pussies. And then Triple H ordered uh, all the people that were in the handicap match last week, and they're on the stage and they stood with Evolution. So the can so the heels outsmarted the baby faces in some way, which isn't the best, but they're gonna get theirs at Extreme Rules, of course. So that was the end of that. And then Goldust and Cody Rhodes face off against the Usos. And Curtis Axel and Ryback were on commentary. And Ryback was actually kind of funny. I kind of liked him, even though he's supposed to be a heel and stuff like that. But he made some jokes about his father was a bartender in, in Vegas. And he served Curtis Axel, or not Curtis Axel, but uh, Kurt Henning. And some other jokes like that. And Usos won this one, of course. Poor Brotherhood or... Rhodes Brothers, whatever you want to call them. And Cody took the loss on this, and there was a little dissension, because Goldust went to go help Cody, and then Cody, like, kind of pushed him away and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, Goldust was all concerned, and I would think maybe Goldust would be the one that would turn heel, because Gold Cody is the young, pretty boy, so you want him to be the face, and then Goldust against the heel. And I kind of wish, if they were going to have this match, I'd rather have it at WrestleMania 30 or not Extreme Rules or whenever the next pay-per-view after that is, because they announce a lot of matches for Extreme Rules, so uh, there's not going to be that many matches probably announced next week. The entire card's probably already announced. So that was that. Usos won. They threw to the... They talked about Jimmy, I think. Yeah, Jimmy got his uh, wedding against Naomi. And then... Let's see what happened after that. Oh, Emma against Layla. Layla was looking good in her little... She, looked, she was like Summer Rae outfit. You know, looks like a dress, but it's wrestling attire. Emma brought out the woman Cobra, the Miss Cobra, whatever, and hit, him, hit Layla, and Emma wins. So I don't know what they're doing with Summer Rae. If Summer Rae's just... She's hurt, or she did something bad. Because I would think you'd want Summer Rae versus Layla to mean something. But if Layla was losing to Emma, whatever. So Renee Young did an interview with John Cena. Talked about how he's scared, but he's going to be a man and face John or face the Wyatts, no matter what the people vote for. And then Paul Heyman comes out, talks all this stuff about how great Cesaro is and how he is the advocate for the one in 21-1. and one. And it was kind of awkward because they just cut away to a commercial mid-promo. And then he came back, and he kind of looked like he asked if we're back on, if we're back on from break. And then he kept on talking and talking. And Cesaro actually had music. It was kind of like an air horn type thing, and some hard, heavy metal or rock, or something like that. And I wasn't a big fan of it, but probably after I hear it for a month, I'll start to like it. I kind of like his old theme music with the Switzerland theme, but. He's not really Swiss, he's just Cesaro, he's not, I don't really know who he is, he's just a badass, he's strong. So then we got RVD versus Cesaro in the semi-final IC title match. So I would think, coming in this, I thought it was going to be Cesaro against Bad News Barrett for the finals. But RVD pulls this one out by the skin of his teeth when Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter come out. And both the guys are on the outside, and RVD comes in, so the referee's back's turn, uh, talking to RVD. And then Jack Swagger pushes to pushes Cesaro into the ring post and he just happens to be on the ground and the referee just starts counting even though like you don't have to see it you just know that Jack Swagger probably did that to him so wouldn't you just give him a disqualification but whatever I'm not it's wrestling I'm not supposed to think about it that hard I guess oh just like when Ryback and Curtis Axel came out and they were doing the commentary that was right after the evolution thing and they were on the stage with them so don't you think if I was a commentator I would ask them why were they out there on the stage with Evolution? And, you know, why they back them up or something like that? Ask them something about it. They just didn't even acknowledge it. When it happened, like, five minutes right before that match started. But, whatever. 
They need a continuity guy over there at WWE. Talk about this stuff. So RVD won. So it's going to be RVD versus Wade Barrett. And I'm going to take Wade Barrett. He's going to face Biggie Lanks in the Extreme Rules. And then we're going to do the predictions when the time comes. So then Paige against Oksana. Oksana looking good. The Paige won. And then Rusev against Sankara. Rusev dominated Sankara. And Rusev is going to face Xavier Woods. And our truth that Extreme Rules, 2-on-1 handicap match. And... Damn it. He's almost hit a home run. But, gotta hit the weights. So, Rusev won the submission. And then John Cena came out. And then they got voted on. And it was 35% just to face Luke Harper. And it was like 53% to face all three members. Which is kind of... It seems right, because, you know, all the Cena fans would vote to just face Harper, but then all the Cena haters would vote against, you know, all three members. So, the Wyatt mostly dominated this one. Wyatt didn't really do anything. He would get tagged in, and then he would... Uh, he actually danced with, not his corpse, but Cena was, like, limp and wasn't doing anything. And then he was almost about to kick him, and then he didn't. And so, mostly it was Harper and Rowan who was doing most of the damage. And then, at the end, Cena was attacking Bray, hit him with the F.U., and pinned him, or he was going to pin him, and then one, two, and then all the people come in, and so they attack him, and then they get this, uh, referee goes to the bell, which would technically mean John Cena won, but no announcement was made, so whatever, and then John Cena, you know, gets demolished, and then Cena's body is, like, laying on, uh, Wyatt, and then he starts singing the whole world in his hands, and he kind of added a little extra verses in there so the crowd wasn't singing along with them that much, but that's how they close the show, Bray Wyatt. And John Cena close the show. They're going to have their cage match. Extreme Rules. Next weekend. Sunday. May 4th. So yeah, that's the, that's the video for today, guys. And I'll see you guys later.